What is up guys? Welcome back to another Geek of What video and today I'm going to be using all these parts behind me to build an incredible $2,000 gaming PC build. So without any further ado, let's dive straight into it. This video was made possible by Squarespace. Learn more at the link in the description below. Now as you can see behind me there is quite a lot of components in today's build and I'm going to run through them one by one as I assemble and put this system together. And what better place to start than with the CPU and the motherboard. Now for the motherboard I went for the MSI MPG Z390 Gaming Edge AC. Now it's easy in a build of this budget to just buy the most expensive motherboard out there. Something from Asus's like Maximus uh, or Zenith Extreme lineup, for example. This MSI motherboard, though, has all the features we could need on it, including Wi Fi, which is really important, and some really good overclocking headroom. We're pairing this with a CPU that has similarly good legs for overclocking, the Intel Core i7 9700K. Now, not only uh, does this chip's high core count uh, with Intel's hyperthreading technology make it great for multitasking the applications such as uh, video editing or rendering, but the single threaded performance that still arguably beats out AMD's latest 3000 series in a lot of cases makes it a great chip for gaming as well. If you wanted to save yourself a little bit of cash, a Core i5-9600K could work well. And similarly, the Ryzen 5 options at the moment aren't too bad either on the value for money front. The next component we're going to pop in while our motherboard is easy to access and out of our case is our RAM. This is the XPG Spectrix D60G by Adata, who are now one of like the top five memory manufacturers in the world. I mean, their rise has been meteoric. And this RGB RAM, I've got a bit of a soft spot for it, uh, as I've mentioned in a couple of videos previously. This particular kit is a 16 gigabyte kit uh, with a rated speed of 3000 megahertz. So bang on three gigahertz. But uh, as I've said before, motherboards like this will allow you to overclock it even further. Install the memories easy, line up the notch on your RAM dim with the corresponding notch on the motherboard. And it will only go in one way, so don't force it. Once you've lined it up with your notch on your motherboard, a push on each side and you'll get a satisfying click sound. Repeat them for your final dim. And it really is as simple as that. Uh, we're not quite finished though with our motherboard uh, yet before we put it into our case. And that's because we're going to install this, an RGB M.2 SSD. Yes, you heard that right. This M.2 drive has addressable, fully customizable and fully synchronized compatible, um, if that even makes any sense, um, RGB LEDs on it. Now, I have seen questions before when I've used this uh, M.2 drive. Don't the LEDs make it really hot? No, not had any issues with reliability or temperatures uh, on this XPG drive. Once again, I'm going to sort of quite ironically grab my Samsung SSD screwdriver pen um, because the screw thread size uh, is really, really small for M.2 drives. Someone did ask me where you can buy this. I, I'm not aware of anything, but I'll try and link a suitable alternative in the description below. Installing the M.2 drive is, once again, easy. Simply slide it on in and secure it down with the included M.2 screw. The next step in today's build process is to move the motherboard assembly, as we call it, over to the side, and we're going to grab our case. This case right here is the brand new XPG Battle Cruiser, and it looks a lot bigger than it is, um, but we'll get onto that in a moment. XPG have branched out and started making like cases, CPU coolers, power supplies, keyboards, mice, headsets, all that good stuff. And this is the second case of theirs I've had a chance to take a look at. The first one was in a build recently, and the feedback on it was incredible. And this case here, is not only filled to the rafters with features, I mean, four included RGB fans for a start, and more mounting holes than I think I've ever seen in a chassis. Um, 
It's actually really affordably priced at like $150, though latest pricing for everything for Amazon will be linked in the description below for different regions and that kind of thing. The first thing you want to do with any case is unscrew and take off as many panels as is sort of feasibly possible, especially on a chassis like this with absolutely shed loads of glass. It's gonna make our life so, so much easier and also stop us from breaking things. I'll be honest with you, I have absolutely no idea how this front panel comes off, so I'm gonna sort of pull it and hope for the best. That doesn't seem like a great idea. I think I might sort of give up temporarily on the front panel um, because I think we can sort of manage without that, at least for now. The next step is to actually pop the case uh, down on its back because that's going to make installing our motherboard a whole load easier. Once again with an A-Data case they've pre-installed all the standoffs that we're going to need so all that's left to do is pop in our motherboard IO shield and then secure the motherboard down with the screws included with our case accessory box. Now that our motherboard is into the case, before we get carried away with our CPU cooler, loads of RGB and the GPU, I want to nip round the back of the case and pop in our power supply and our mechanical storage. This here uh, is a two terabyte Seagate Barracuda hard drive. It's gonna give us 2000 gigs of capacity for all our movies, music, games, Steam and Origin libraries. And that really means that your 500 gigabyte uh, M.2 drive uh, is saved for your most frequently used apps and files and that kind of thing. Installing a hard drive in this chassis is super easy. And that's literally it. I mean, let me just let me just do that again so you can see just how simple this is. Boom, completely toolless. And then all we've got to do is pop in our SATA power and data cables in a moment's time. First though, you want to grab the power supply bracket out of the accessories box, as well as a couple of included cable ties that we are going to need uh, in a second. In terms of the choice for the actual power supply itself, I've kind of gone for a two-part option. Now, you could go for a really expensive 80 plus gold certified 800 watt unit. Uh, with some decent included cables or go for a reliable trustworthy 750 watt 80 plus bronze power supply from Corsair and pair it with these cool cooler master sleeved cable extensions they work with any power supply and they're going to look really really good and make the build feel so much more premium these aren't completely necessary but they are within today's budget and i'll link them with everything else in the description below Now that our system is really starting to come together, I mean those black and white braided extensions look superb, uh, we're going to try and install our CPU cooler. This is the brand new XPG Levante 240, it's a 250ml all-in-one liquid cooler, I believe it's an Acer Tech design underneath the XPG badging, uh, which is a really really good thing, Acer Tech are the best sort of AIO provider that you'll tend to find. Um, that also means this thing isn't mega mega cheap, but should perform pretty well. So let's give this a go.
Now, just before we screw on the CPU block, uh, it is worth noting you can take this top bit out to make installing the radiator easier, um, but I'm just a bit lazy for that. Oh dear. Um, sorry. Okay then, I think pretty much everything is in now apart from the GPU, which is my personal favourite component in any build. For the GPU, I went for the NVIDIA RTX 2080 Super. Now, arguably in this budget, if you save and scrimp a little bit on other components, you could fit in a 2080 Ti, but in all honesty, there's not much point because the performance goal between this the glorious 2080 Super and that of the 2080 Ti isn't overly large. The 2080 Super uh, is a really, really, really great card. It's not been out an awfully long time uh, and performs really, really well as you'll see in the gaming benchmark section in a moment's time. It does, of course, support NVIDIA's ray tracing technology and I personally once again opted for the Founders Edition. Now, I've made this joke before, but you can check your hair in the mirror on the Founders card. Um, and it's also $200 cheaper than most of the other options on the market, uh, which is always a bonus. I believe you can like buy the Founders cards now in Best Buy in the US as well, uh, which means these are really readily available and you haven't got to try and find an odd uh, one for sale on the NVIDIA website. This case does also have a vertical GPU mount, though I think for this build I'm going to stray away from it just to make sure we can get uh, a bit better airflow because you're not going to have a massive amount of clearance. I might do one or two B-roll shots with it at the front vertically in the case so you can see how that looks though because uh, it's a great option to have. Okay then, with everything... Oh, oh, forgot to uh, power our GPU up. With all of our components installed and all our power supply extension cables hooked up, the system looks great already and we haven't even seen it switched on yet. All that's left to do is do a bit of cable management, pop those side and top panels back on, and then install some games to see just how well this system performs. But first, a message from today's video sponsor. From blog websites, portfolios, online stores, and more, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that lets you build a beautiful online presence. Fully responsive, completely customizable modern templates let you showcase what you or your business does best front and center. Great SEO tools make sure your website gets seen and full social media integration plants you firmly in the 21st century. The built-in commerce tools open the door for a world of selling possibilities with unlimited products, subscription support, multiple payment methods including Apple Pay and countless currencies, the possibilities really are endless. Head over to squarespace.com to learn more than I could possibly fit in a minute. And for your free trial, and then when you're ready to launch your beautiful site, head to squarespace.com slash the first link in the description below, to save 10% on your first website or domain. There really is no easier way to get up and running with a website for you or your business, with the all-in-one marketing, analytics, hosting domain, and website building tools from Squarespace. Now that you've seen just how good the system looks, it's time to jump in and see how well it performs in the latest AAA titles and the most popular games alike. Whether it's GTA 5 at 4K, high and ultra settings, sustaining 60 frames per second consistently and providing a killer gaming experience, or something like Overwatch where you'll be seeing 100 FPS at 4K ultra settings. This machine really is a 4K beast through and through. Forza Horizon 4, for example, looks fantastic. I've said it in quite a lot of builds now, but it's my favourite game of the year. And this system makes it look better than ever before. The ability to go, you know what, I want a game at 4K and 
I want a game at ultra settings makes this machine just my ideal system and honestly it's the reason I've fallen in love with it. Packing all the punch of an RTX 2080 Ti also allows you to take advantage of Nvidia's ray tracing technology without gaming at 23 frames per second. Ray tracing of course is super duper intensive and a game like Battlefield 5 is really hard to run but this system makes it not only plausible but a really enjoyable experience. You get all the ray tracing tracing advantages, those really nice shadows and reflections, without having to deal with the awful performance hit that you normally encounter with a lower end RTX graphics card. Now if you are going to build this system or game on any machine with an RTX 2080 Super or 2080 Ti, just be careful about which settings you have on maximum because there's a couple at uh, your render distance settings for example that you can set one or two points higher and it will really kill your frame rate for not much in the way of return but all your general settings in terms of your visual fidelity are fine to be cranked up to the top. Something like Apex Legends is another game where you get a great experience. Ultra settings across the board at 4K and you're gaming at 70, 80, 90 frames per second. Which is just, it just gets me so, so excited. If you can't already tell. For those of you wondering, this machine can of course run the likes of Project Cars 2, quite an easy game to run, and League of Legends World of Warcraft at 4K ultra settings well over 100 frames per second. Something like Call of Duty's Black Ops 2 is also going to work really, really nicely indeed. I keep meaning to get my hands on the new COD game, but just haven't got around to it yet. But with that being said, I think that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. If you did enjoy it, give it a big old like rating and make sure to get subscribed so you never miss another video from me. Thank you very much for watching and as always, we'll see you in the next GeekaWatt video.